Welcome to Apartment Guitars, the channel all about guitarist gear and small spaces. Today, we're going to cover some tips and tricks on how to play your tube amp at bedroom volumes. Many guitarists don't have the luxury of an at-home studio and live in a shared living space. Maybe with some roommates or in an apartment building with lots of neighbors, or maybe you just don't want to disturb your family. I've lived in a few different apartment buildings over the past seven years, from my college dorm in South Florida to my current living space in Manhattan. And despite my best efforts, I have had my fair share of knocks on the door asking me to turn it down. And it can be really discouraging and keep you from wanting to continue to play. Over the years, I have found some pretty solid ways to be able to play outside of headphones and still enjoy the sound of my tube amp without disturbing the neighbors. So what can you do to keep your volume down but still have an enjoyable playing experience? The first thing that I recommend is getting yourself a cheap decibel reader. Something like this Rise Pro from Amazon will do a great job for what we need. It's under $30, it's prime, gets here nice and quick. Take your decibel reader and measure the volume of your daily activities. TV, music, air conditioner, learn how the normal noises of your apartment are and how far they carry. Play some music, stand outside your front door and do a recording. This will give you a great target uh, for how loud you can be with your amp. If you never get complaints for listening to music or TV at a certain volume, then that decibel level is a good target. So now that we have a baseline for your target volume, let's talk about how sound travels from your amp. If you have a closed back cabinet, most of the sound is going to move forward from your speaker with some of the lower frequencies resonating through the structure of the cabinet itself. A closed back cab, in my opinion, is ideal for sound management in an apartment. If you have an open back cabinet, more frequencies are going to escape through the cavity in the back, which is great for filling a room with sound, but keeping the perceived volume under control is a lot more difficult. But no matter the cabinet that you have, decoupling it from the floor is an absolute must. Decoupling basically means getting the cabinet off of the floor. This could be done with a special stand or a chair, or if you want to be really extra about it, a second cabinet that you don't plug in. By getting your cab off the ground, you keep it from resonating into the floor, which means less vibrations for your neighbors to hear or feel. Raising or angling the cab also helps you hear your amp much better, meaning that you can turn that volume knob down just a bit more. Next, we can talk about amp placement in your space. This part can be tricky, as space can be a limiting factor, but a few things can go a long way. Number one, avoid putting your amp in a corner. This will only amplify lower frequencies, which are more easily heard by your neighbors. Number two, if you can, have the back of your amp facing an exterior wall or one that is internal to your apartment. For example, the wall separating your living room and bedroom. Number three, aim your amp at a closet. The extra door and stuff inside of the closet will function as a dampener. If you can't do this, aim your amp anywhere but at a shared wall. And if you still can't do that, try to put as much distance between the amp and the shared wall as possible. Number four, Put your amp in a room with lots of books or furniture or on top of a thick rug or soundproof pad. All of these things will help dampen the sound and allow you to be a little bit louder in the room you're playing in while keeping it quieter outside of that room. Now that we've gotten some of the cheaper tips out of the way, let's talk about some gear options that you can get to help keep your sound down. But before we dive into actual volume managing gear, I'd like to point out how important dirt pedals are to bedroom volume playing. No matter what you do to tame the volume of your amplifier, you're never going to get it to sound like a roaring tube amp at bedroom volumes. But we can give it a little bit of push with a good dirt pedal. Going forward, just keep in mind that overdrive, distortion, and fuzz pedals are a must when we're talking about bedroom volume playing. When it comes to actual volume management gear, the first and cheapest option is to put a volume pedal in the effects loop of your amplifier. Something like the JHS Little Black Box is perfect for taming the blistering volume of a tube amp. These little guys are only about 50 bucks and in my opinion are the most effective option for getting bedroom volumes. I personally don't notice any tonal change apart from the inevitable tonal change that happens from playing an amp quieter. Next on the list is an L-pad attenuator. The problem with L-pad attenuators is they can have a little bit of tonal fall off. So if you do get one of these, make sure that they have some sort of treble booster cut switch to help kind of compensate for that. 
another great way to fix this problem is to put an EQ pedal in your FX loop and that will help with a, a wide array of tonal issues. If you are comfortable soldering and can read a schematic, you can build your own l pad attenuator for somewhere, I think I built this around like 30 bucks. I'm not particularly great at soldering or reading schematics, so I think if I can do it, anybody can. And this is a really, a really great cheap option to see if this process will work for you before investing a, a boatload of money. Next on the list of gear is an active load attenuator. These are clean, transparent attenuators that use a reactive load to mimic the complex impedance dance that you get from a speaker and amp. Something like the Two Notes Capture Series is a great option because it is also a load box, headphone tab, and has a built-in impulse response. So you can do silent recording or play into headphones, and these range anywhere from $250 to about $600 for the new Captor X, but they're absolutely worth the price. Last on the gear list is an amp that's apartment friendly. You can absolutely use all of the tips and tricks in this video to get your 50 or maybe even your 100 watt amplifier to play at bedroom volumes. But if you get yourself something like the Orange Rocker 15, you can play in your bedroom at 0.5 watts and with your band at 15. Getting gear that's appropriate for your situation will always make your life easier than trying to force a square peg into a round hole. But that being said, what's most important is that you're happy with your gear and with your rig and that it inspires you to pick up your guitar and play. If you like this video, please leave a like, hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell for notifications. Check out my other videos and stay tuned for more content. Thank you all so much. Have a good one. I think that's all I got for this one. Ah, shoes help. Toes don't hurt so much. Thank <laughs> you.